everyone and welcome to another review from Colour with Claire. Today we've got another edition of Colouring Heaven to have a look through. This is the Animal Wonderland Special and it features 40 brand new and exclusive designs by Kanoko Egusa. So you might recognise her name from her beautiful Rhapsody in the Forest book. Uh, she's had a couple of colouring books I think actually and also a previous Colouring Heaven that she featured in called The Secret World of Animals. Now, I'm not sure when this was. Is it dated? I don't know. It's issue 33 anyway, and the new one is issue 59. So it was quite a while ago now, uh, but this is her brand new and exclusive Colouring Heaven edition. So everything in this book has been commissioned for this book. It's brand new. You won't have seen it anywhere else. So Kodoko's, um style, as you can see from the front cover, is all about animals, and it's very whimsical. It's very... Um, how do you, what's the word when animals are, have human characteristics? Is it anthropomorphic? Something like that. So it's animals basically living human lives. <laughs> and that will make more sense as we go through. So you've got the back here as well showing you some ducks and a water scene. And again, you can colour front and back. It's all nice and matte and has a really nice toothy texture for pencils. So we open up and as usual we have our colour combination charts, a little bit of information about Kanoko just saying that she was born just north of Tokyo, um, she learned design and illustration at school and worked as a freelance graphic designer on her graduation. In 2011 she started work as an illustrator creating imaginary worlds filled with animals, flowers and plants. In 2015 a job offer changed her life when she was asked to illustrate a colouring book. The result was The Beautiful Rhapsody in the Forest and Menway de Bon, her books published in 2017. And then you've got her different links there for you to go and find her work. So let's have a look at her beautiful illustrations. So some of them are portraits, some of them are landscape. It's a mix throughout the book. And as you can see, it just really, each one encapsulates this really small sort of um, sneak peek into the world of these animals. So this one, it's just a... A little peep into the, their forest world you've got robins and ducks and really beautiful plants and flowers it's a very delicate gorgeous type of illustration it's really really nice and sweet and detailed and quite realistic as well even though it's sort of fantastical subject matter the, the drawings are realistic so this is the one I've done as you can see it's one of the first ones already um, I colored this with Prismacolor pencils and a little bit of white gel pen so I really, really enjoyed colouring this one. And the main thing, the main reason that I chose it was because of the gorgeous Tiffany lamp. And I don't think I've coloured a Tiffany lamp before. So I really wanted to um, to give that a go and try and emulate the beautiful shards of glass and how they're all different colours and shades and things like that. So that's what I did. Um, I'm really pleased with how the, the lamp stick, I want to say lamp stick, what is this? Uh, the base of the lamp has turned out. I used uh, sepia, um, sandbar brown, lime peel, I think, and then jasmine to make to make this metal colour. And I might even do a tutorial of that because it's turned out really, really well. It's it's like a tarnished metal that's that needs a good clean. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I just went with it, and that's what came out anyway. Uh, the macarons I used a tutorial from Helen. Elliston's colorist special effects to get those really nice macaron textures on there um yeah so yeah I re really enjoyed how that's turned out I, I really um wanted to keep it quite cohesive with the colors because I often just use too many colors and it looks all over the place so I made sure that I used all the colors from the Tiffany lamp in the different elements of everything under here so the flowers the uh the rabbit's dress or cloak or whatever it is he or she's wearing uh, so I tried to keep it all cohesive in that way. So this is, oh, we've got some little pigs, pigs in teacups, ducks in cups. We've got lambs and um, rabbits. So it's, it has a very sort of springtime fresh um, baby animal feel. <laughs> so this is, I believe, the fox from the front cover. Yes, you can see there. And he's just nestled in the woodland. You've got the birch trees. That might be another um, tutorial that I do soon, how to colour a birch tree and get those textures on there. So we've got another springtime Easter illustration. We've got the big Easter egg wrapped in a ribbon, loads of gorgeous flowers and petals on top and the little chicks uh, that have just hatched or hatching. 
This is a really nice one because it's got a frame going on. So you could almost imagine this as a photo frame in your living room. So you've got the gorgeous frame itself with all of the different posies on there. They look kind of like poppies, but I'm probably wrong. And then you've got the, the inner picture inside the frame, which could be done in completely different colours just to give the contrast of the frames. So this is a look inside the kitchen. We've got a hen sat in a dish. We've got a little rabbit sat in a bowl. Um, this frog has got his hands on a pear. We've got a bee up here. Uh, we've got some mice in the teapot. We've got honey and lemons. And yeah, it's all very cozy country cottagey style illustrations. So this one is another sort of frame. It's one of those that it looks very simple, but then you look at all the detail and you can imagine it taking ages to colour. So it looks like there's not really too much on there, but they're really, it's deceptive in that way. Um, but all of these are pretty detailed. So if you're looking for something to really absorb yourself into and uh, take you away to another world for a few days, um, one of these illustrations will be fantastic. So we've got the little dormice inside the tulips and on the, I think, hmm, what is this? The leaves and things look like it would be a blackberry bush, but I can't see any berries on it. Anyhow, you've got the thatch roof cottage in the uh, in the background there as well. So it's almost again like this is framing the foreground. Uh, it has a lot of depth. A lot of these have quite a lot of depth. So we've got a gorgeous hourglass and instead of sand, this is filled with petals and flowers and blossoms. Absolutely gorgeous. Just really nice original ideas. And at the bottom here, you can see we've got a couple of little dormice. Or they could be rabbits even. I think they've got rabbit ears. Uh, a couple of little creatures anyway, snoozing in the hourglass. So this one is purely flowers. There's a couple of bees or maybe one bee. Yeah, just one bee going through the flowers looking for his nectar. Then I think we're back in the kitchen, loads of food and plated uh, goodies. So if you wanna learn how to color some of the different foods on this page, I do have a food tutorial, how to color berries and uh, jelly as well. I've got on there and all different things. So those tutorials might help you with this book because there is a lot of food stuffs, but it looks like Mr. and Mrs. Mouse are on their anniversary dinner. We've got a waiter here with the napkin folded over his arm, ready to serve. Uh, it's just really sweet and, I love how, again, that anthropolum, blah, 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 that name where the animals take on the uh, characteristics of the humans, uh, it's just fantastic. So we've got here what look like hummingbirds, I think. Uh, well, there's one hummingbird or maybe a couple. And then we've got parrots and mice and in the, uh, in the bird houses. So it, it seems like all the animals get on really well. <laughs> and I guess this forest is just their shared home. So you've got the cat looking very, uh, very slyly up at the bird here. Uh, in the, so I'm hoping he's not going to go and uh, go and scratch him down. But uh, I'm hoping they're all friends. We've got a couple of little dormice here on the swing. And this one's looking like he's just at a massive Christmas or Thanksgiving dinner. Because he looks really podged out. Uh, next one, we have what looks like a cake tearing plate. Uh, what do you call those? Um, a cake serving tray thing. So you would have like an afternoon tea on here, your scones, your jam, your cream, uh, but it's filled with plants and animals. It looks as if they have found one of these sort of nestled and hidden and forgotten within the forest and they've made their own habitat out of it. This is a kind of wallpaper illustration. So you can see that a lot of um, sort of gilded um, cross work, bar work on here, metal work. And then it's sort of um, intersposed with all of these different creatures and uh, and things. <laughs> this one's really, really nice. Uh, this really caught my eye when I was going through the book because of the depth of field. And you can see, you know, all of the different elements going on. So we've got a load of penguins and seals down here. And this looks like some sort of Grecian building that's right on the edge of a lake or uh, even the ocean, maybe. And you can see the mountains in the background. There's a boat coming along. And then at the top, you've got all the flighty animals, the birds, the butterflies and the uh, the flowers dangling down. It's got a lot of depth in it. Uh, there's a lot of interest in it. And I think it'd be really, really beautiful when it's coloured. So here we've got uh, Princess Rabbit, I'm going to call her. She kind of looks like she could be a, a Cinderella type rabbit. <laughs> uh, they've got butterflies and flowers in the background. So this would be a good one for you to practice your fabric, silk, um, and that kind of material. 
we've got another one that's this way around this is a couple of pigs they're very very cute pigs and they're sat inside a um i'm gonna call it a what are those hats made out of like rattan like a summer hat like a beach hat they're sat in one of those and they're again surrounded by this frame and around it you just have loads of little flowers and leaves and pearls and things so yeah really nice one they're all beautiful oh we've got another one this way so this is the i'm guessing the farmer's market and this particular stall is donuts and cookies so you can see the cat and the mouse are just uh seeing what the pig has to offer we've got loads of donuts beautiful uh treats there sugary sweet treats and you can see this mouse down here is already scoffing his donut so this one let me have a quick look ah so this has a reflective um, area in it so you can see here that this is a puddle on the ground that this squirrel's just about to walk into uh, he's left his umbrella aside I guess it's stopped raining uh, and you can see all of the leaves have loads of little dewdrops on them raindrops so again another thing for you to practice but this is going to look amazing when it's done because it is reflecting the sky so you've got the reflection of all of the um, the foliage and the flowers and then you've got the rainbow as well so I'm really interested to see who colours that and how they go about it. So again, with the rain theme, we've got loads of umbrellas with all different patterns. And uh, again, just animals flying around, having fun. This is the one from the back cover that you saw. So we've got the ducks on the surface of the water and then bobbing just below. We've got all the creepy looking fish. These fish really freak me out. I used to live on a boat on the canal uh, for a very short time. And <laughs> I used to put my feet in the canal sometimes because it was like really hot summer. And then I realized that there were these huge trout and, and things in there. And it just really, really freaked me out because the canal water is really dark and murky and you can't see anything. But every so often you kind of get a glimpse of something just something massive just sort of floating on by and oh freaked me out I don't know how I did it I wouldn't do it now um anyway so this is what is this this is a, a sort of conglomeration of patterned um patterned things I don't know what this is but it's it's all mashed together with these frogs and these um these flowers I'm trying to figure out what it is it looks almost like a Chinese uh you know those uh, what do you call them those separation um screens that you would put to get dressed behind it kind of looks something like that this one is oh all the ducks having fun in the swimming pool uh, again just really really sweet illustration and, and a great sort of snapshot into their world so all the ducks are in here with the little flowers um they've got little i don't know these peaches or something that they're they've got here and a cute little fox or a dog it's probably a dog isn't it i think it looks a bit too yeah it doesn't yeah dog and a cat let's just say <laughs> but again just really fun i like it so this one has a lot of flotsam and jetsam and all this kind of um oceany stuff so we've got um shells and starfish and cockles and, and all that kind of stuff we've got this kind of seashell pattern going on as well uh, scalloped edges and we've got the two cats sat in the boat with the dolphin down here so I can imagine this being a really fun summery illustration full of very bright bold colours here we've got the horse or the donkey I think I'm going to say it's a donkey or the mule he's carrying the sacks of lemons I think they're lemon they might be persimmons or something weird like that I don't know <laughs> and he's following the hen I guess they're just fruit picking and collecting all of the harvest spoils then we've got another snapshot into the house of these rabbits so they've got some guests around here we've got a bear we've got the squirrel the cat and the little mouse and they're all collecting up their fruits i don't know what this one's this one's just looking on despondently <laughs> <coughs> excuse me so this one we've got a couple more uh, these look like swallows i think i'm going with swallows because of the the wing pattern it just reminds me of those tattoos you see on the necks of ex-cons <laughs> that's that's really random and dark um so yeah the swallows are just flying around in the these look like chestnut leaves or oak leaves oak tree leaves i don't know i don't i'm just guessing um and berries so yeah this one's really fun. It's kind of a Halloween -y illustration. So it's set at night. You can see the stars in the background, the buildings. It reminds me of those children's books, Meg and Mog. Did you ever hear of those? I don't know if they had them in the US. 
they were massive over here in the UK uh, and funny bones as well I digress um so we've got the fox on the broomstick and the little witchy mouse just hanging on a couple of mice hanging on actually we've got the owl um the moon and the moonshine is going to be really really good to color on this um and I guess making this a silhouette might be a good idea so loads of detail on this one but if you look into it it really sort of goes very far again it's got that depth so here in the foreground you've got the mice and he's sitting on some cluster crystals that seem to have just sprouted out of the ground alongside these mushrooms and toadstools but then you look further into it and it's almost like um, a cave structure again with the crystals growing up and down and uh, leading this tunnel leading to who knows what this one's quite a fun one. So we're sat inside one of these kind of uh, Scandinavian, are they Scandinavian shoes? I don't know. Um, the clogs, clogs, aren't they? Denmark, Danish, I don't know. <laughs> uh, we've got the squirrel sat inside the clog. Again, loads of sort of autumnal things in there, acorns and apples and nuts and things. And then down here, we've got a cute little hedgehog. I got a lot of stick the other day when I was reviewing Kirby's book that uh, something I described as a hedgehog is actually an echidna and I've never heard of an echidna but to me it's it's just a hedgehog with long feet. Uh, this is the inside of what looks like a bookshelf I think but within the bookshelf there are all these tiny little worlds going on so you can see here between these two books we have an archway that leads out onto some rambling field. Um, here we've got a little panda just sat down, little cat up there as you can see. Um, here we've got a do another doorway with a little mouse we've got those cluster crystals again a globe a, a raccoon i think we don't have raccoons in this country um then we've got a horse with again i think this is actually bringing in some of the elements of things that we've already seen throughout the book so um again with the cluster with the um hourglass the butterflies um yeah so it's just a, a glimpse into the bookshelves so here's another oval kind of portrait. I don't think this one would take too long. This is probably quite a good one for you to get stuck into if you want something quick and easy. So we've got the pumpkins and uh, the, I don't know, you call these gourds or marrows or something. I think this is a gourd, isn't it? Uh, we all have different words for things. I find it incredibly interesting, like it, between America and the UK and all the other countries and the different cultures and all the world, uh, the different words that we have for things. Like I think you guys call aubergines eggplants. I don't know. Um, anyway, so this one, this is really sweet because it's actually those little um, cut out clothing things that you used to get when you were a kid or I, I did anyway and basically you would colour them and cut them out and the flaps would just go over your little character so you could dress them in different paper costumes that's really sweet we've got a steampunk hat we've got a clown costume uh, we've got the witch's hat plenty of different things there that'd be really fun if someone um scanned this and printed it onto heavyweight cardstock and actually made it into a usable um thing so we've got a couple of cats asleep in a hammock we've got a duck down here what else is going on nothing really it's just a lazy little sunday morning in a summery bright and warm enclave of the forest so this is christmas time now so i feel like we've moved from spring to summer with the ocean things and then to autumn with the pumpkins and gourds and now we're on to winter so it's funny, I didn't really notice that as we came through, but it seems to be the, the running theme. Um, so we've got Christmas baubles or ornaments, decorations, and they're filled with little animals. Um, we've got a little cherub down here. We've got a couple of robins. Uh, this, what kind of dog is this? Is it a Pomeranian? I, mean, I always get mixed up with dogs. We've got a lamb and another angel. Really Christmassy. And then could you get any more Christmassy than a gingerbread house with Christmas trees and snow and polar bears and sweets and candy and all sorts of good stuff. This one is a sweet little cat just uh, walking through the fields, walking through the uh, the forest and it's just started to snow and all these gorgeous different sn shapes of snowflakes just falling down. And then the very last illustration we have is another one of these gorgeous framed illustrations. So again, 
I would do a different um, a different pattern, a different colour scheme around this pattern and then something completely different in here so it has that contrast. But I think with number 40, the last one, we've come back full circle and we're back into spring now, I guess, the stitching things for the, for the new year and it all seems very spring-like. So I really like how the, the book has gone from through the seasons and then you end up back at the start. So that's the end of the book. <clears throat> So on the back, usually we have a little um, advert for things that Colouring Heaven are doing. Now, they've just created this thing called the Discovery Club. And um, I'm going to be doing a video about it shortly when I've received my first email. Um, but basically what the Discovery Club is, is that you pay £3.98 a month. And then every week, I believe it's on a Friday, you will get an email. And in that email, you will discover a brand new artist. So a new artist every week, you'll get an exclusive design to colour. So a download that you can print off. You'll get an artist interview and loads more different stuff um, included in the club. So £3.98 a month is just really not that much at all to... Um, to get not only a beautiful illustration, which as you can see, some of the examples around here, I believe this is Laura Rafferty. I'm um, trying to identify the others, I can't. Um, so you'll meet a new artist every single week. And for that price per month, I think it's, it's a really, really good uh, thing to do, especially if you like printing out your own images onto your own paper and uh, you know finding something different every week. You also get discount codes, I believe, for the, the shops or um what have you of the artist so really worth doing but i will be doing a proper in-depth review on it very soon so if you want to get your hands on this book you know what to do by now if you've been watching my coloring heaven reviews uh, all the links will be in the description so you can either if you're in the uk nip out to your local supermarket and shop and find this on the shelves right now or if you can't find it in your supermarket or you live anywhere else in the world, you can buy it online. And the link, as I said, will be below this video in the show notes. And you can also subscribe. So if you have enjoyed the last few episodes of Colouring Heaven and you think this is something you'd like to buy regularly and get introduced again to another artist every single month, um, why not subscribe? And it will arrive on your mat through your door without you having to do anything else every single month. So I really hope that you've enjoyed looking through the latest edition of Colouring Heaven. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, something like 60% of my viewers of my videos apparently are non-subscribers, which I just found out the other day. So I would really, really love, if you've enjoyed this and you like my videos, for you to subscribe to the channel, please, um, and see everything more that I have to offer. So please subscribe if you haven't already. Give the video a thumbs up so other people come across it more easily. And uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you soon on Colour with Claire.